Welcome to the Brady Marks podcast with your host, Brady Yashia from Brady Marks Buyers Advisory. Enjoy discussions with a variety of guests and pioneers from diverse backgrounds, each sharing their unique perspectives on property, business, industry, and more. Ben Power is based in our Brady Marks Canberra office. Ben is a true Canberran born and raised in the area, and he brings a substantial amount of expertise in the field of real estate. We can't wait to hear your practical advice and valuable insights on achieving success with your property investment strategy. Welcome, Ben. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thanks, Brady. It's always great to have one of the Brady Marks team on the podcast. So I wanted to start with asking you, before joining Brady Marks, you were a standalone agent starting your own business and then decided to join our team. What made you make the switch to joining Brady Marks? Yeah, I think I just saw the opportunity. It was, the, it was advertised um, that the buyer's agent in Canberra and I thought, what an opportunity. I've been trying to do this on my own um, for the last couple of years and had moved into it full time. Uh, but that support network is something that I really feel, felt I needed and it's something that I've got uh, now, which has been fantastic. Well, we're very happy to have you on board and being part of a team, as we say, teamwork makes the dream work. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, so moving forward, what has been, besides being part of the team, what mm-hmm. else has been a benefit of joining the Brady Marks team? Is there anything else that stands out? Um, yeah, I think it's just the expertise that comes with it. It is really the support from, from, the, from the whole team um, and everyone's got a different background um, and can help in different ways. Like e- every transaction and property that we buy is a different story and a different client. And leaning on everyone's expertise um, really helps yeah. so that we can give the best support to all our clients, really. That's right. And I think that each and every one has our own story. And if we bring our stories and our expertise together, we can collaboratively help our clients. Spot on. Yeah. So you're at the top of your game in the hospitality arena. What was the trigger that made you switch to the property industry? Yeah, I think um, yeah, I was in hospitality since I left school and made my way up into management positions uh, and was leading teams of up to four or 500 people at some venues. Um, and I loved helping people and I loved seeing the staff grow uh, and a lot of them move on into their own careers and support them into getting into their own careers. And eventually I think I just realised that maybe I wanted something different. Uh, and I always had this passion for real estate and had been a property investor myself. Um, and was receiving lots of questions about that from my friendship group and my wider network. Uh, so I made the, made the decision to go into it. And you can use the same skill set when you use the word help because that's what you're doing on a day-to-day basis as well. It's exactly right. So what I love now is uh, it's a different form of helping. I love helping people uh, and that, that's why I do what I do. And to be able to help our clients um, achieve their property dreams um, is fantastic and it's so rewarding uh, and I guess I used to get that reward from helping the um, staff in the club environment and the hospitality environment and now I've been able to transition that into helping people in the property space. Yeah, every yeah. day is different. No yeah. day or brief is the same. A hundred percent, yeah. Every single day is totally different and I love that. I love the variety of it. Um, a lot of people think that it'd be really straightforward and, and day in, day out, but um, yeah, every single day provides something new. Yes. Yeah. So you, as I mentioned earlier, you're born and bred in Canberra. You've seen so many things change. What do you think gives you an advantage when helping our clients and your clients buying property in Canberra, having grown up there all your life? In being a born and bred Canberran, um, it gives gives me a great advantage understanding the market there. So you know which streets are good and which streets are not so good? Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> <laughs> there is certain areas in, in certain parts of Canberra that, that, would, that you'd want to avoid and there's other areas that are much more desirable. And I suppose that gives us an advantage to identify those areas and, and really target them for our clients um, and, yeah, just support them through that whole journey of of purchasing the property. Yes. So you have over 18 years experience building your own investment property portfolio. Mm -hmm. 
What do you feel are the key lessons that you've learned and how does that make you a better buyer's agent? Yeah, I think um, if I could go back and tell myself when I first started and bought my first property to use uh, a professional to help me purchase that property, I would definitely go and do it. Um, You know, I see, I go to auctions now in Canberra and often I just stand there wondering why more people aren't using a professional to assist them. Uh, Often people are paying more than they need to for a property and I, that's what happened to me when I purchased my first property and I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to share that. Uh, and, and it was tens of thousands of dollars that I could have saved if I had a professional on my side. And I think that it's just a learning process. Um, so then when I purchased my next property, you know, you learn more about the last one. And gradually um, I started to realise that I had a real knack of the knowledge into p- purchasing property uh, and... Yeah, a lot of people would ask me about it uh, and I realised I think I know more than more than what I might think I know um, and once I explored that a little bit more, I was able to realise, hey, I'm going to go into this and help people. So through your own experience, firstly, embarking on the journey yourself, not knowing much, you actually have acquired a lot of knowledge and expertise, which is now... Um, given you the skill set to help a lot of other buyers. And, and you're quite right that most people need help. It doesn't matter whether you're a first home buyer or you're a seasoned investor, having a buyer's agent by your side does give you an advantage and saves you money. Absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, and, that's, and that's why we're here now. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so over the last six years, I personally have seen so many positive changes in Canberra. I mean, they're fabulous restaurants, great exhibitions, and even buying property, there's great value in the properties in Canberra. What do you think have been the biggest changes in Canberra over the last six to ten years? Yeah, I think um, there's just a lot more diversification in Canberra now. Uh, it's got people from all over the world that have moved there. Uh, and there's lots of different precincts and anywhere you live in Canberra now, th- there's a great community environment to that to that area of Canberra. Yes, it's a multicultural city. It really is, yeah. Um, um, what's driving the growth? I know you just mentioned um, overseas, international people. What do you think is driving growth besides immigration? Yeah, I think it's just a really desirable place to live. A uh, great place to bring up a family. A lot of people move to Canberra to, to grow their family and, and, and put their kids through school. It's a really safe place to live. Uh, and so it's really appealing um, as, a, as an area to live. It's, it's out of the hustle and bustle of like one of the major cities like Sydney and Melbourne where you might be in traffic for hours on end every day. And in Canberra, you really can get from one end to the other and anywhere within 30 minutes. And I think uh, that's really appealing to, to people to live there. Yes. I mean, the lifestyle's fantastic. It's got something for everyone besides the beach, but that's okay. You just get in your car and you drive. How long does it take? It's the get... only thing missing, yeah. So the beach <laughs> is um, about two hours away down to the south coast. But aside from the beach, it does have everything. It's got all four seasons. That's another thing people love about Canberra. Yeah. Um, you really do experience all the elements. It's really hot in, and dry in summer. And then in <laughs> winter, it can be freezing cold. Freezing. <laughs> I've experienced that many occasions. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then obviously the beautiful springs and autumn. And we're going through spring at the moment with Floriade in Canberra, um, which is a great time. Yeah. yeah Floriade's beautiful. Yeah. The flowers are I actually went there so last pretty. week. Yeah. It was lovely. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you seeing um, on the ground? What types of buyers are you meeting? Are they first home buyers? Are they upsizers, downsizers, investors, interstate, overseas? Yeah, I guess it's a mixture of all those things. I mean, at the moment, we're helping a a client that's an interstate couple that is relocating. Um, But when I'm going through the open homes of late, there's a lot of first home buyers and people looking to upsize. Uh, the, The properties that seem to be really popular are the ones that are turnkey properties ready to move in. Yeah. They've been renovated, they're ready to go, you just got to walk in and start enjoying life. Uh, and those properties uh, seem to have a large amount of interest. Um, and then, the, But the properties that need a little bit of work, it really does start to drop off, is what I'm saying on the ground. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's um, the case across Australia. Most people are looking mm-hmm. for an easy... 
um, easy route into their new property. So they just want to walk in and enjoy it. However, we, we still encounter lots of buyers that like the thrill of doing up a property and um, putting their own stamp on it. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, I think with the increased costs to do renovations, that, that's having an impact and the interest rates obviously are having an impact on, on, on people's decisions. Uh, but there are some people out there that still love love to do their do it on their own. Yes. Yeah. And are more property selling at auction or prior to auction, or is it a combination of both? Yeah. Um, uh, it, well, the um, the clearance rate, the auction clearance rate for the last six weeks has sat at pretty much fifty percent. Uh, and the feedback I'm getting from the agents on the ground is that a lot of the auctions only have one or two potential buyers uh, and the expectation from the vendors just it, it's it's not meeting buyer expectation um, so yeah a lot of getting passed in on the back of that uh, there are some properties that are selling prior to auction as well there are some agents that like to sell their properties prior to auction uh, and that's still occurring as well so none of us can predict the future but I'm always asked this question, what do you see happening over the next three, six, 12 months? So I wanted to know what your thoughts were, what's going to happen in Canberra, bearing in mind that we are in the last quarter of 2023. Yeah, I think I think the signs are leading to more growth. Uh, and that's Australia wide, uh, just with the immigration. Um, and there's just not enough stock to house all these people. So that demand is driving the market across Australia and all the sub-markets across Australia and, and I think that we'll see c- continued growth into the new year. And I, I tend to agree with you mm. on that. Ben, you're very analytical and data-driven. How does this benefit both your everyday life and also working with clients? Yeah, I often get told how analytical I am and I do love the research and it's something I spend a lot of time doing, researching for our clients and just the property market across all of Australia as well. Um, as I am still uh, an a- avid invest- investor, uh, I like to keep across all those markets. So I spend a lot of my time doing that research and analysing uh, and finding the best areas to purchase property uh, and being able to share that information with our clients and then and then go ahead and purchase on their behalf. So a bit of a tip for the listeners, where would you say are the next best places to buy? Yeah, okay. Um, at the moment... Queensland is very popular, uh, as well as Western Australia and South Australia still a little bit as well. So there's lots of activity in those areas um, and that's probably because they're more affordable. So a lot, a lot of investors looking to enter the market uh, for their first investment, they're the kind of areas they're looking at. But I still think there'll be lots of growth in the Sydney and Melbourne markets over the next kind of 12 to 24 months as well um, for those that can afford those areas too. Yeah, those are very good tips. And... If we speak specifically on Canberra, where would you say are good places for first home buyers and investors to be looking in? Yeah, sure. I'd be looking in the south side, um, in the Tuggeranong areas and also in Belconnen, um, which is where I actually um, grew up. Um, so it's very affordable at the moment and first, a great place for first home buyers to be buying. Excellent. So changing topic a little bit, getting a little bit personal, but not too personal with you. Um, I know you love to travel, so do I. It's one of my favourite pastimes. Yeah. Where has been the best place you've ever been to? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think I'd say Mexico. Uh, I went to Mexico about three or four years ago for one of my best friend's wedding and we had the most fantastic time. Yeah, the culture there is super... Um, yeah, and obviously going there for a best mate's wedding and, and it was so out of the ordinary. We just had the most amazing time there. But I've also done a lot of travelling around Europe and most recently we went to Sri Lanka, which was just unbelievable. It was an incredible, incredible place. The people there are amazing. Sri Lanka, wow. That's a place that a lot of people talk about but not many people actually visit. Do you want to share something that you experienced whilst you were there that was a standout? Um, you know, what was, uh, an absolute standout for us was when we were in Gaul, we went to a seafood restaurant and had the most amazing seafood basket. And that's something that we, um, we enjoyed that so much that we took everyone that was there with us in the group that were with back there the next night 
and then oh. everyone got the exact same thing. We, 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 we sold them out of seafood, yeah. <laughs> so I guess that was a bit of a highlight, yeah. Um, learning multiple languages is a fantastic skill and I believe you're learning Spanish. I love Spain. Mm. In fact, Marbella is one of my favourite places in the whole world. Why Spanish? Yeah, I think it was off the back of our time in Mexico um, and Spanish speaking is spoken in so many countries around the world and so I thought if I learn Spanish, I'll be able to communicate with just so many more people while we're travelling. For, you know, for the rest of our lives, we want to travel to, to as many locations as we can and Spanish is a language that is spoken in lots of areas so I thought it would really help. So when will you be fluent? Uh, probably about 20 years time. <laughs> <laughs> practice makes perfect. Yeah, I practice every day, so um, we'll get there. So being in real estate is a full-on job. It's definitely not a nine-to-five. So when you're not working, what do you do to unwind? Um, yeah, I guess we, we, we love watching movies together, um, me and my family, and spending time with, with the kids uh, and watching them play sport and go to their dance. Uh, so just spending time with family is really and friends is something I love to do. I, 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 I'm big on sports, so I follow a lot of the, um, the sports in Australia and overseas. So I spend time following that too and watching that. But, um, yeah, just relax. Yeah, relax. (laughs) Sometimes that's hard to fit in, but we all need to. That's right. It's very common today for people to change careers. In fact, they say that most people change their career up to four times in their lifetime. You've changed your career. What did you find was most challenging yeah, it's a good question. I think the most challenging thing for me <clears throat> this year has just been the transition from going from, you know, a nine to five type <clears throat> job, pardon me, uh, and and, sh- and just waking up and going to work every day. Uh, and then at the end of the week, you get a paycheck. And then now going into kind of more business model uh, and a sales model, it's like you just really got to hit the ground running. And so it's a totally different um, way to, to work and earn an income. And so I've really enjoyed that adjustment, um, but it's probably also been the biggest challenge as well, just getting used to the differences of how I used to work to how I need to work now. And what would your advice be to someone looking to change careers? I'd say go for it. Um, Educate yourself as much as possible and be prepared, uh, but don't hold back. If it's something that you really want to do and you're passionate about it, then you should definitely go and chase it. So get uncomfortable to get comfortable. Well, 100%, yes. You've got to get outside your comfort zone, um, as we both know, and that's how you can succeed and move forward. And how do you define success? Um, Yeah, happiness. I think for me, happiness. If I I feel successful when I'm happy. Uh, And so it doesn't – it's not always determined by, you know, what your title is or making millions of dollars or whatever it might be that – for for some people that's their goals it's really just about being happy and if you're happy with your life and content then I think that that's success that's beautiful yes (laughs) so shifting back to buying property what would your three biggest tips be to someone looking to buy their first property Um, research yeah absolutely researching where you want to purchase um, and then looking into comparable sales. So having a look at what's sold in that area recently, compare it to what, what is on the market at the moment uh, so you have an understanding of the value of what you might be looking at. And then lastly, I, I would encourage everyone to engage a professional, a buyer's agent. They really can assist you with your purchase um, and save you a lot of money uh, and avoid a lot of, uh, yeah, um, mis- Making expensive mistakes. Making expensive mistakes, exactly right. Prevention is better than cure. Yes, that's what we say. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Do you have a favourite quote? Uh, Yeah, my favourite quote at the moment is win the day. Um, And it's a quote that uh, the way I use this quote is you wake up every day and no matter what's happened the day before or the week before, you have an opportunity just to be successful in that day. Um, And so... Every, yeah, every day I wake up, that's what I focus on. Um, try and have as much success in that day. And as that compounds day in, day out, day in, day out, and you look back in a week's time or a quarter's time or half a year's time and a year's time um, and you can just really appreciate how much 
success you've had and how far along you've come. And so it's just about those little wins rather than getting um, knocked down all the time. That is so good. Yeah. I'm sure the listeners out there are going to start using that quote <laughs> too. Well, I hope they do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if someone wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to reach out? Um, yeah, so you can reach out on our website, which is bradymarks.com.au uh, and you can find my profile on there. Um, or also on LinkedIn, so Ben Power, buyer's agent, and yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Brady. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. <laughs>